So we, you and I have to stand strong in the climbs of life. You and I have to stand strong in the, in the, in the ways of the world when the world tries to move us. We need a leader who will stand strong for God, notwithstanding the odds. I mean, I say this and I know it's politically not correct, but if you stand for God, you cannot fall for anything. But if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. The Queen of England made a statement that said recently that marriage is between a man and a woman. In spite of the fact that it was unconventional, politically incorrect, but she stood as the leader of her country, a 90-year-old woman who has ruled for 54 years. Said, look, marriage is between a man and a woman. It doesn't change biology. It doesn't change what the law courts have said. I mean, if the law courts said it doesn't change what we know as Christians, in the beginning, God made man and woman. He didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. So what am I trying to say here? We need a leader with a steel backbone. We don't need a jelly spine, yellow kneed, butterfly belly aching leader who can't stand and talk to our allies and our enemies. We need a man who can stand on the word of God notwithstanding the consequences. You see, and I'll give you an example. In the book of First Samuel, there was a leader called Eli. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says that Eli was sitting at the gate. You see, in the Old Testament, gates represent places of authority. Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. This, this boy slept with women at the altar, stole goods that came, people who brought offerings to God, they took the money, they took the meat, they took the food and did what they wanted with it. They, 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 they made people despise offerings to God. And Eli was a leader. Eli was their father. And God said, I have told Eli to restrain his children. I have told Eli not to pamper, not to whimper, not to cower, not to speak softly to his children. But Eli has not done what I said. And God said, because of it, Eli's generations will die and become beggars and not live above the age of 50. You can read the story in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse chapter 3 and chapter 4. But stay with me. Eli was a leader. Why? Because if you read 1 Samuel 4, 18, he died at the gate. He was at the place of leadership. But he did not stand for God in the place of leadership. You see, when you don't stand for God in the place of leadership, you die in that leadership as a pauper, as a as, as a man without a legacy, you, you depreciate the value of your family in coming generations. We don't need a leader like that in America. A leader who cannot look sin in the eye and say, this is sin. We, not a, we do not need a leader like that in America who cannot speak truth to power. You see, in the days of England during the Second World War, there was a leader called Chamberlain. And Chamberlain went to Germany, after Hitler had invaded the, the Eastern European bloc, taking over the Scandinavian countries, and, and, Ch and Chamberlain went to Hitler and said, do not invade England and we'll not invade, America. we'll not invade Germany. We'll stay out of Europe if you stay out of Great Britain. And they made a, 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 they made a, a, a term, they made an agreement for peace. And when Chamberlain returned to London, he says that we have made peace for our time. It was only a few years before Hitler was bombing London, trying to take over the city of London and the country of Great Britain. Chamberlain was a man without fortitude. Chamberlain was a man without a, a steel spine. And the people of England rejected him at the polls and elected the man called Churchill. 
Churchill led England through the war, the Second World War, and he stood every year, every day on the radios, on the TVs, and he would tell England, never, never, never give up. And people have credited with Chamberlain's morale-boosting speeches, Chamberlain's boosting ego ego egotistic speeches with spurring the British people to resist the inv invasion of Germany. It matters who leads you in the time of crisis. Listen to me. If Chamberlain was still Prime Minister of England, most likely England would have lost the war. England would have suffered invasion and the rest would have been a nightmare for others to even recall. But when a man like Churchill was elected, he turned the table on Hitler. He fought Hitler in France. He fought Hitler in, 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 in Belgium. He fought Hitler in the Scandinavian countries. He fought, he took the battle to the gates of Hitler. While Hitler was advancing in the days of Chamberlain, he was retreating in the days of Churchill. Listen to me, friend. If we want to advance America, we need a leader who has fortitude. We need a leader who can stand up and say like Churchill, never, never, never give up. Eli stood up in front of his sons and said, can you help me? Can you stop doing what you're doing? And God said, I didn't ask you to advise them. I asked you to restrain them. I asked you to pull them off the office of the priest. I asked you to be a, a man who will stand against them for what they, what they are doing. You see, in the Bible, there was a man called Caleb. In the midst of millions of people, the Bible says Caleb raised his voice in the book of Numbers chapter 11 and chapter 12. The Bible says they had gone to the promised land and they had seen the giants and they had brought back the, the fruits of the land. They had said it was a land flowing with milk and honey. And the Bible says Caleb stealed the people. Caleb said to the people, he says, these people who are giants to you are bread for us. Everything depends on how you look at it. And the Bible says they mocked him. They talked of stoning them. And then God said, look, these are millions of people, but I have one man, two people, Joshua and Caleb, who have stood for me. In, the, in, the, in spite of the unpopularity, in spite of the despising, in spite of the hatred, I have a people who will stand for me. And he said, everyone above the age of 40, everyone above the age of 20, sorry, will die in the wilderness over the next 40 years. And only Joseph, only Joshua and Caleb will see that promised land. Listen to me, friends. When you stand for God, God will stand with you. Joshua and Caleb walked through 40 years of the wilderness. And at the end of that wilderness, God gave them their land. Do you know that there was a land called Horeb? The Bible says it was changed to the name of Caleb. I was reading yesterday about a man called Nabal. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, a wealthy man, even though he was a fool, even though he was a wicked man, even though he was a man with poor social skills, the Bible says that he was of the seed of Caleb. Listen to me. When you are a man of fortitude, even your seed who don't fear or believe in God, God will say, because of their father, because of their grandfather, because of their ancestors, because of their pedigree, because of their progeny, because of their people who came ahead of them, I will preserve, I will empower, I will prosper them. Nabal prospered because he was of the seed of Caleb. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? Check it out in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 3, 4. Nabal, the seed of Caleb. When a man has fortitude, when a man has staying power, there's nothing the devil can do about it. There's nothing the devil can do to stop it. And there's nothing the devil can do to hinder him. 
The man called Daniel entered into a foreign land. He was a stranger. He was a foreigner. But he had fortitude. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 that Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself. 